Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video, I'm gonna go over pressurized water reactors which are much more modular and flexible compared to the large nuclear reactors. Not only because you can build them in any size you wish, but because they can be cooled using fluids like molten salt and even heavy water. So I'm gonna go over the basics and then we are going to build this big reactor which is heavy water cooled and it can process the most basic fuel which is medium and rich uranium. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Starting with the components required, we very first have the PWR controller which is needed to assemble the reactor. Neutron source will add 20 flux to the core and fuel rods will hold the fuel in the reactor. So these three components along with the pressure vessel are mandatory in order to make a PWR reactor. Next we have the coolant and the heat exchanger. Both of these things will move the heat from core to hull and from the hull to the coolant. But to get the coolant in and out, we need the excess port. The excess port can also get fuel in and out of this reactor. Neutron reflectors will reflect the neutrons and control rods will control the amount of neutrons passing. So now let's make a very simple PWR reactor with a base of 3 and I am going to use a fuel rod. Let's see what happens if we don't use a neutron source. As soon as a controller is placed, it will show that neutron source is required. So placing down a neutron source with four fuel rods and now placing the coolant channels along with some heat exchangers and covering it all up, placing the controller, it will show all of the missing blocks. So all of the components need to be covered with the casing blocks. Reflectors do count as casing blocks. So once it's done and right clicking the controller, we'll actually assemble this reactor like this. Now, if you want to make any changes, you can break some blocks and place another blocks and yeah, this is how changes are made in this reactor. So now with the excess ports placed, we can get coolant in and hot coolant out. And coolant is by default the setting on these reactors. And in order to measure the power, I'm using a creative Stirling engine. And for the fuel, we have highly enriched uranium 235. Now this is a very basic reactor as it only has three reflectors on the sides. But the thing is, that this reactor can actually work in three dimensions. So you can place reflectors on the top and the bottom of the fuel rods, not only on the sides. So I'm going to make a similar reactor. As you can see, with three reflectors, it's making 72,000 Hg per second. Now I'm going to, as I told you, make a similar reactor, but this time also going to place reflectors on the top and the sides. Now completing this reactor, and uh, yeah the power difference the flux difference is going to be drastic compared to what it was before so yeah the previous reactor was producing what 72,000 Hg per second this one is going to go up to 450 451,000 Hg per second so it all depends on the flux and the heat now for flux we have something which can increase it without like using more neutron sources and that is heavy water and thorium salt so heavy water will increase the flux in the core by 25 percent so right now we have 20 with heavy water in the reactor now the flux is 25 thorium salt will increase it by 150 percent so you can use these two liquids as coolant and also as flux multipliers and excess ports can, as I told you, be used to get fuel in and out of this reactor. So the power difference with heavy water is drastic compared to coolant. Now let's make a big reactor, right? For medium and rich uranium, which is going to be the most basic fuel out there. So for the base of this reactor, I'm going with a 9 by 9. And this 9 by 9 will be made with the pressure vessels. So there goes a 9 by 9 square and now I am going to use a total of three layers of coolant channels. The more coolant channels and heat exchangers you use, the more efficient heat transfer will be and the less there is a chance of your reactor going boom. So I am going to, as I told you, three layers in total like this and now in the very middle place down a neutron source surrounded by four control rods with the control rods placed break some of the coolant channels and place down reflectors like this so we are going to use reflectors in order to seal the top 
and the bottom of the fuel rods. In total, there will be 12 fuel rods placed exactly like this. Now on top of these reflectors, place down the 12 fuel rods and the pattern should start looking something like this. Next up, we are going to place control rods in middle of these fuel rods and also on the very end like this. And finally, with the control rods placed, we will close it off with reflectors. So there will be five reflectors on each side in order to completely close it off. So there goes a last side and yeah. Now for the corners, make this L pattern. And once this entire pattern is complete, we are going to stack it by four more times so that it is five high in total. So select both of the diagonal corners with world edit or you can just build it up if you are in survival and stack four up. That's a total of five high fuel rods. So we have 12 on each layer times five. A total of 60 fuel will be in this reactor at any given time. Close the top of each fuel rod with reflectors and now we are going to make a three high layer of heat exchangers like we made a three high layer of the coolant channels. So that's one layer done and now on the top we can just have heat exchangers and without like any reflectors in the middle. So setting it like this and our basic reactor structure is actually done. Now all we need to do is cover it up. So for covering it up, I'm once again using world edit, but if you are doing it by hand, then you will go layer by layer like this. And if you miss any, then like the controller will let you know. So yeah, there is no need to worry about that. Replacing all of the air with the pressure vessel casing. That's the top part done. For the bottom, make sure to place down excess ports and also the controller. And then you can place down all of the pressure vessels. With all of that done, right clicking the controller will assemble this reactor like this. Now in the remaining spaces, you can use any block of your choice if you want to decorate it. So by default, we have 100 flux in the core because of five neutron sources. And for the coolant, I am going with heavy water. So setting up the heat exchanger and as we don't know the amount right now, I am going to set it to maximum, which is 9999. One of these pipes will be heavy water. The other one will be hot heavy water. And once filled up, we can get rid of the source because it's a closed cycle and the flux has increased by 25%. So this time, in order to process all of the steam that will be produced, we are going to need a total of four industrial steam turbines. I'm not using Leviathan because of the decreased efficiency. Because with this setup, we are going to get 14 mega HEs per second. And with the Leviathan, it comes down to what, like 12 because of the 85% efficiency. So yeah, it's much better to use industrial turbines when we are not getting that much power in the first place. So setting up four turbines with the boilers like this and making a closed loop for the water to go back into the boiler. And with that, the loop is also done. We can fill our boiler up with water and with the boiler filled with water and the reactor filled with heavy water, we can start this reactor. So as soon as you place the medium and which uranium fuel rods in, this reactor will work passively. But we don't want to work it passively, we want it to run at maximum efficiency. So pull out all of the control rods by 100% and as soon as you do that, the core and the hull heat will start going up. And the final number that you end up with is 181,065 flux. That gives us a power value of 14.21 MHz per second. So yeah, this reactor will also deplete fuel much faster compared to the smaller reactors that we made before. And uh, you can try this design with the thorium salt if you want. So once the reactor has depleted fuel, you can cool it down and reprocess it in a centrifuge. If you guys like this video, do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out and stay safe.